AWS Solution Architects combined their countless years of expertise in creating and analyzing thousands of architectures on AWS to define a set of best practices for architecting systems in the cloud. The result, the well architected framework, famous for its six pillars, the operational excellence, security, reliability, performance, cost customization, and recently, sustainability. Following these pillars enables us to develop and manage dependable, secure, and cost-effective cloud systems while adhering to best practice architectural methods. In today's video, I will tell you all about AWS Well Architected Framework and its rather practical instrument called the Well Architected Tool, which is available for free within AWS console and yet very few people know of it. Now, if you're a cloud architect or simply looking to build a highly available, secure and sustainable solution, well, you'll definitely want to start using the Well Architected tool regularly. If you're a manager, you'll want to keep watching as well because the amount of insight you can get from the Well Architected tool is just priceless. And if you're just curious about it, well, I will be covering how it works, who exactly it's for, and how it operates. But most importantly, what are the advantages and how you can identify and make adjustments. Now, without further ado, my name is Ilyas. I'm a senior solutions architect. Now let's do this. You see, engineers are very familiar with the term design patterns. That's when someone after working on hundreds of thousands of problems discovers a very efficient way of solving them and decides to use this specific solution as a template should similar future problems appear. One of the most famous illustrations of this concept appeared in the book Design Patterns, Elements of Reusable Objects-Oriented Software by the Gang of Four back in 1994. That was actually the book that popularized patterns that we still use every day, like facade or singleton or factory, builder, plus the proposal of building a well-documented set of APIs to drive a smoother development of Merchant.com and to serve also the internal developer audience had begun. And the rest is history. A couple of decades later, Amazon and AWS engineers, much like the Gang of Four, set out to put all they've learned for the past 20 years building the biggest cloud provider in the world into a white paper full of design patterns called the Well Architected Framework, a paramount read full of key concepts design principles and architectural best practices for designing and running workloads in the cloud. Now, if this sounds confusing, I don't want you to worry because we are gonna go through a real demo right now. Within the console, let's look for the Well Architected tool. And we have it right here. It's a service like any other service within the AWS console. And let's start by defining a workload. So remember, a workload, as we defined it earlier, is pretty much the application that you're going to be working on. This is going to be the order management service in my e-commerce application. You can give it a small description. All right, so the order management service, the owner, I'm gonna write my name right here. Let's go through the environment. I already have this service in production and I'm going to be reviewing it prior to a big sales launch. So it's already in prod. I have this service already deployed in US East Virginia. Account IDs, no need to give this for now. You can also link to, the, to your architectural design. And let's choose the industry type in here. So. You know what? Let's just choose automotive. Let's say we're still in automotive prices. This is not gonna change anything actually. I think AWS uses this for internal, I don't know, statistics or whatever. Maybe the report will change, but so far uh, they all look the same. Industries, automotive, tag your workload. People always tag your workloads. And here I get to choose either the well architected framework by default, and I can add some lenses to it. So we talked about the serverless lens, we talked about the SaaS lens. I am going to just stick 
with the AWS well-architected framework by default, and I wanna define my workload, and this is your starting point. So let's go through it a little bit. We have the last time it was updated, we haven't answered any of the 58 questions. No high risk nor medium risk have been found so far. The list that we are using is the well-architected framework. And you see here the uh, well-architected framework pillars. And you can see here that we can hit save a milestone. So remember the definition of a milestone. So this is the steps that our service or our workload goes through. And for now, we just started. I'm gonna leave it empty. Let's start reviewing. Bam. And this is how it's gonna be for the whole exercise. You see here on the left, you have a list of questions that relate to the pillars, to one of the pillars, either operational excellence, security, reliability, yada, yada, yada. In the middle, you have the question and then a bunch of answers to choose from. And every question has a bunch of helpful resources on the right that explain what the question is, but also every answer has a bunch of resources on the right that explain it. So let's choose a couple of those and, and go through them. So operational excellence, the first question is, how do you determine what your priorities are? Keep in mind, we are targeting the order management service here. We're not doing the whole website, just one service. Everyone needs to understand their part in enabling business success have shared goals in order to set priorities for resources, this will maximize the benefits of your effort. So how do I determine what my priorities are? Do we actually evaluate external customer needs? Hmm, let's say yes. Do we evaluate internal customer needs? Let's say yes. Do we evaluate compliance requirements? I'm gonna skip this for now. Uh, evaluate trade-off, manage, let's say we manage benefits and risks. You know, so imagine yourself, you're in the war room, you have all the stakeholders right next to you, and you go through this question, and you ask the question, and you're having a conversation, and everyone is chiming in, and also you're learning more about this, and everyone is learning more, but at the same time, you are evaluating your design. And you can add notes here. You can say, I don't know, to do talk with Bob because Bob is in vacation and he's the one responsible for this. I don't know, next. So this was saved and now we go to the next question, right? Let me jump. So here we have all the like 11 questions for the operational excellence. I want to jump on to security. All right, so the first question, how do you securely operate your workload? You know, you ask your developers. So do we actually separate workloads using accounts? Maybe not. Maybe we have we put everything in one production account, so we don't do that. Uh, do we use secure AWS account? What does secure mean? Hmm. Secure access means that, for example, do we have MFA? Okay, we have MFA. Uh, the root user is, maybe we don't have that. We talked a little bit more about how you can secure your account in the previous video about the Nonia, the AWS Lambda virus. Evaluate and implement new security services and features regularly. Next. And this is pretty much what the tool does. So you go through all these questions. Every time a question is done, it's marked done. Let's jump to cost optimizations because I wanna show you the report. How do you monitor usage and costs for this specific service? Establish organization metrics, let's say, okay. Allocate costs based on workload metrics. And let's say, next. I can't go through the whole tool because it takes time, but I hope you get an idea about how it works and, and about how all this makes the conversation really interesting and moves everyone towards the right direction. Now, let's say we've gone through all these questions and we've finished. I'm just gonna do save and exit. And here you see that I already identified three high risks, but before that, I'm gonna save a milestone. I'm gonna call it March release. I like March. And once I saved my milestone, I can go to milestones, select the Mars release, and then generate a report. Once that's done, I'm gonna download my report, open it, and this is the report I was talking about, that after you've put all your information and answered everything about your current application, it generates this report for you that covers your current case, but also your improvement plan, what you can do to improve your application. So let's go through it. Of course, we haven't answered all the questions. 
so we don't have there yet. And there's a bunch of links here in the report that you could use. But for operational excellence, the Well Architected tool have identified a high risk that we have around how do you determine what your priorities are. So let me click on it and it says, here's the choices that I selected, the choices that I did not select, my notes, and here is my improvement plan. And it gives you links to reference architectures, documentation, code sometimes. For now, it's suggesting that we'll look at, for example, this link on how to evaluate trade-offs and just, you know, guides you here and explain what you're missing, explain what next steps you can do. Now let's go back to, to the other high risk that we had and that was around security. And let me click on that. And yeah, we just selected these two, we didn't select all these, and it gives us a bunch of links to improve our security. And that's pretty much it. Now let's go back to the video. I hope I was able, through the demo, to showcase how using the well-architected tool empowers you to assess workloads, to identify high-risk issues, and also to track your progress, you know, on a regular basis. So let me recap the benefits of the AWS well-architected tool. But if you're getting value from this video, just do me a solid and smash that like button. Everybody's saying it's helping the algorithm. I don't know if it's really doing that, but if you're getting value, by all means, let me know by smashing that like button and thank you very much. Now, the first is the fact that you get free architectural guidance. You know, when you need it, you can get access to the expertise and best practices advised actually by AWS Solutions Architects themselves. You know, you just have to answer a few questions about your application, your workload, um, and, and the AWS well-architected tool will provide an action plan with a step-by-step -step instructions on how to enhance your application or workload. Now, another benefit you must have noticed is that the tool allows you to review your workloads constantly. To analyze and measure your cloud designs, you'll need a single tool or you'll want to use a single tool and you'll want to use a consistent procedure. And that's what the AWS Architecture Tool provides. It helps you evaluate these possible risks by allowing you to monitor the status of numerous workloads throughout your company. You can also use the action plan that is generated to determine the next steps for improvement, to drive architectural decisions, to confidently develop for the cloud. And the third benefit is that it supports continuous improvements, you know, because it makes it simple to save and manage point in time milestones for your workload and to help ensure that your architecture improves over time. But there is another use case for which the well architected tool presents a big advantage, a huge advantage, actually. I want you to think about this. Your business is about to go through a major event like high sales season, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, summer high sales season, release of a new upgrade, you know, then you want to vet your infrastructure. You want to make sure that your infrastructure is ready for what's coming, right? Here's what I strongly advise you do. Invite stakeholders to a meeting room, infrastructure engineers, product managers, developers. Yes, developers are stakeholders as well. I mean, they write the code, so they have a big stake in the products, if you ask me. And together, use the well-architected tool to conduct a well architected review, a war, through its simple form. You know, the well-architected tool allows for a more conversational approach rather than just doing an audit in your own desks. Um, it helps to develop these well-architected systems that considerably boosts the chance of business success. Book a war room, bring some coffee, ask everyone to put together their notes in advance and prepare to go for war. Now, going through the war without any of its added lenses takes roughly about four hours, but at the end of the exercise, you will have gained insightful knowledge about your system's potential weaknesses and how it's aligned with cloud best practices. And you'd actually be able to devise a plan of attack based on the reports you generate throughout the tool. I mentioned lenses a couple of times already, and you might be wondering, what is it about? Well, I want you to think of lenses as plugins that you add to supplement the foundational pillars Well Architected already provides. There are currently three lenses that AWS provides by default. First is the serverless lens, which 
help you apply best practices when building, as the name suggests, serverless application workloads. And it covers scenarios such as RESTful microservices, mobile app backends, stream processing, web applications, whatever you decide to build with your serverless knowledge. The second lens is the SaaS lens, which focuses on designing, deploying, and architecting your software as a service, SaaS. And the third one, you will not be using this frequently. It's what AWS calls the FTR lens. And this one is designed for independent software vendors who prepare for foundational technical review in the AWS partner network. But you're not limited to these three. You can create your own custom lenses that focus on your own business and technical realities. So keep that in mind once you get familiar with the tool. Okay, before I conclude this episode, I got a question for you. Will you be using the well-architected tool now that you've watched this video? What do you think about the value that it brings to you as a developer, as a DevOps architect, CTO? Well, please let me know in the comment section below. And I'm also working on a video to showcase how to best structure a diagram that conveys your architecture in the best way while avoiding all the mistakes that make our diagrams, well, suck. <laughs> so make sure to subscribe for that. In conclusion, I want to say that compared to traditional audits, traditional ways of debugging faults in workloads, traditional ways of going through your diagrams and identifying design flows and locating misconfigurations. Using the well-architected tool make this whole endeavor super easy and you will actually find that 90% of the time it makes it faster. But the concept of well-architected will continue to be updated as AWS evolves and I'm excited about what AWS will announce next for it. If you like this video, you will want to check this one out about non-functional requirements, which are super important for solutions architects, but completely overlooked by software engineers. I do a lot of diagramming in that one as well. So if you're into that kind of stuff, well, you know what you have to do. And that was it for today. Thank you very much for watching. This is Elias. Peace out.